To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms. Hello everybody and welcome to a podcast of Biblical Proportions. Bonus episode, the political power of the alphabet. The invention of the phonetic alphabet was a real revolution in the way human societies communicate. The old cuneiform writing systems that included a complex combination of symbols for words or syllables was replaced by the alphabetic writing system that we know today. It's very easy and simple to remember what sounds they stand for and we can play around with them. The first such alphabet was the Phoenician alphabet and it quickly spread from there throughout the region and the world. As we know, the Hebrew Bible was written with such a phonetic alphabet. In this special episode, we want to explore the historical, political, linguistic, and sociological significance of the appearance of the Hebrew alphabet. And the first Hebrew book, the holy book, the Old Testament. There's loads to unpack, so let's dive in. Hi, Omri. Hi, Gil. Okay, so this is a big one. <laughs> this is a big topic. And mostly, it's a very big historical event. Yes, the fact that you can take each sound separately and make a symbol to each sound means two things. First of all, that writing becomes much easier because you don't need to memorize so much. You only need to memorize 22, 26 characters and you can play with that characters any way you like. Okay, first of all, when are we talking about? Probably the 10th century, 9th century BCE. The, it was the first appearance of the phonetic alphabet, the ancient Phoenician uh, mm -hmm. writing. Which Phoenician is, is uh, Phoenician is up here. It's in the north, north of Israel yeah. and Lebanon. It's and the same area. And the ancient Hebrew writing was exactly the same as the wow. ancient uh, Phoenician writing. 22 uh, uh, letters, letters, both of them, and in the same order, and they look very much alike in many, in many respects. A lot of the Roman characters are uh, just Latin, Latin, mirror, character. Latin yeah. characters, yeah. are mirror uh, image of the ancient Phoenician. Yeah. A looks a lot like the, the Aleph, uh, yeah. whatever, the first character in the Phoenician uh, mm -hmm. alphabet. And so Which we're actually is, its origins were a uh, drawing of a bull. Ah, the, for the, the first the Aleph. The first Aleph, yeah. Alpha. Okay. Alpha. So, so the second thing, if it's... Much okay, what was the first thing? Sum the, it up. The first thing was it's the writing became much more accessible. You didn't have to memorize so many hieroglyphics or whatever, so many pictures, because each picture was a word. So you yes. had a thousands of words. You have thousands of pictures to memorize. Chinese people and Japanese people, they have the kanji. They have the characters. And they can uh, connect characters and create meaning and create words the same as a phonetic language can do. But it's but much harder. It's, it's not only harder. For them, the word ma and the word ma, it's not only different, they don't understand the connection. Yeah. Like for me, I, I, I learned, uh, studied uh, Chinese. They don't understand that it's M-A with a different tone because mm -hmm. they have a different symbol. Yeah. So yeah. like in their mind, they don't make the connection. Yeah. So the fact that you have letters, you can play with it more. Yeah. You have more options. You can invent new words more easily. Yeah. You can, uh, we see it also now in the modern language, you can, with the internet and stuff. It, you played with the word, you added this and this. Exactly. And uh, yeah. Whatever. Which brings me to the mm -hmm. next point. If written language becomes much more easier, then you have some kind of a democratization of the writing. You don't need... Uh, small class of individuals who have the brain capacity or time or are funded by some kind of elite to memorize 2,000 or 1,000 characters. And, and those people, most of what they wrote was business, <laughs> trade, yeah. money. Yeah. That's where the money is, yeah. in the money. <laughs> the, the phonetic language was also created, was created out of a necessity to perform business. The Phoenician were business people. Yes, you're right. But they I were think, traders. I think that the most significant impact that it had is a stronger sense of nationality. This was after the Bronze Age collapse. The empires were no more. 
Mm -hmm. You had little states, proto-states. You didn't have a border here, a border there. This is one cultural, religious sphere, continuous. And you had the same symbols. Everybody were using the cuneiform, uh, su uh, Sumerian, Akkadian uh, the form that we have. In Egypt, they used uh, the Egyptian right, had their own. Not in Egypt, yeah. not in Egypt, but, uh, but Egypt, yeah, it, they had it's a own. bit different. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit different. Uh, also culturally, ethnically, whatever. Yeah. And here in Israel, since this is kind of the land bridge f between Africa and the north this is we're talking about turkey yeah. and greece and the east all the major yeah. powers civilization basically so here you had a big mix of people in israel in lebanon in jordan in syria in saudi arabia people that were very similar in many ways and then you have a way to write your own yeah. language your own this is not the universal language this is my language yeah. and what do people do once there is this alphabet and it changes a little bit for everybody the greeks boom and it was an explosion mm -hmm. of national mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. and epics. national quote unquote yeah, quote unquote yes your head. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the uh, air quotes that give them the sense that this is us yeah. they didn't have this option mm -hmm. before and here in this you know a silly little people that do nothing that are not important insignificant yeah. to, uh, to anybody just like those people yeah those people they have their own language and what do they do with it they write their own epics stories mm -hmm. religions mm -hmm. that say this is us because they have all these people around them they are obsessed not only by you know the the f like the the act of writing and putting these stories it, it's, it itself says this is us and they're also obsessed about <laughs> genealogy saying this is us in their story they're also saying this is us we're not yeah. those people not those people yeah. not those people not those people we're only these tiny little people and it becomes like a sort of their official mm -hmm. national story epos. yeah epos yeah, yeah. we can we, we, we can look at the, at least the first two books maybe of the yeah. torah as the Hebrew epos, it's a low budget. <laughs> ep uh, <laughs> I would I, say it's like if you're poor, you you don't imagine uh, what they'll do when you'll be the prime minister mm -hmm. of whatever yeah. president, king, whatever. Yeah. Because no, all your options are just this and this and yeah. this. Once they had this language and they had the option to say what uh, what are we? We're just people who do as we're told and we're just us we're different because we're yeah. pure and it, it. it's significant because it, it gives you superpowers these insignificant people who lived between empires now had access to something that you you needed some kind of a mini kingdom or an empire to have right the babylonians the sumerians they had some kind of an empire a large kingdoms with uh, vast economical and political systems in place and they had a way to tell their story so their story was bigger than life as their empires also larger than life in terms of action but also very dramatic and larger than life in terms of of of, of the subject matter of them dealing with their own demons and with their faults yeah and it's all very big yeah here here it's, it's like small. Imagine you had only one way of making movies. You have to have over a $30 million budget. Otherwise, you can't make any movies. So all the movies are made by large mm. production companies because they can afford those budgets. Yes. But now we invented a, a camera that is quite cheap and uh, yeah. it's Flexible. high definition yeah. it's not like a home recording bullshit uh, vhs uh, from the 80s and you don't uh, need you still need because you need to pay actors yeah, or whatever so but now you have also you have youtube now you, you have, have like a zoom technology <laughs> or something i think that like the alphabet revolution is not unlike the video revolution it's a whole new way yeah. of telling stories a cheap way cheap. of telling yes. stories it's everybody like yeah it's like the internet it's like what youtube made to uh, talk show hosts or whatever they seem obsolete 
All you need is a 20 year old yes. with a charisma and a $500 camera. Yes, but this was true in the YouTube of five years ago. Whatever, you get my point. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you, you know, I, we have a little you beef. You get my point. <laughs> we have a little beef. I'm just bitter. I'm just bitter. Okay, so, so to all these points, just to tie them all together, uh, uh, language, and we talked about it just before we started this recording, uh, in Benedict Anderson's groundbreaking uh, book, Imaginary Communities, he states that language is the number one community marker for people to feel that they are in a part of one community. So India, so many languages, hundreds of languages, Hindi, the official language. Everybody has to know Hindi. Without the Hindi, the North and the South that have never been together as one community until the British came over and said, this is all the same. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel that they were the same. It's not exactly official. It's official in, with air quotes because when you ask them what their official language, they, they name like 17 or 27 languages. Okay. But everybody speaks Hindi. You go Everybody's to the supposed north to speak Hindi. I uh, I studied a little bit Hindi, no. and uh, the student that was next to me was like a twenty-five five-year-old girl from Tamil Nadu, and her level of Hindi and my level of Hindi was the same. Okay. So, but basically, you have like news in Hindi. Yeah. The prime yeah, minister yeah. speaks yeah, in, that's, in yeah. Hindi. There's a concentrated effort of Ta making Hindi yes, 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 an yes, official of language. Tamil Nadu, it's also, they have the, like the, the different culture yeah. that also, that yeah. that's also actually to the point. Yeah. They have their own like, yeah. uh, the Tamil movie mm -hmm. industry that is exactly. separate uh, yeah. from the Bollywood. So this is actually uh, like the exception to the rule, mm -hmm. the, the exception that proves the, the proves rule. The rule. Yeah. We can talk about Italy, yeah. much smaller than India. Uh, for hundreds of hundreds of years since the Roman uh, Empire collapsed, each area had its own dialect, which sometimes sounded completely different from a dialect like uh, 100 kilometers yes. uh, up north. Yeah. If, you're from, if you are from Verona and if you're from uh, Palermo, Palermo or Napoli, <laughs> no R. <laughs> if you're from Palermo <laughs> or you're from Verona. <laughs> You're then, racist. Like uh, 100 years ago, even after the formation of Italy in uh, 1870, 69, whatever, the, the end of the 19th century, they, their dialects are sufficiently different enough that you can actually say it's kind of a different language, like Catalan is from Spanish mm -hmm. in Spain. Mm -hmm. Spanish, uh, Castellano, that's the official name of Spanish. And what happened? And what happened? There was a concentrated effort yes. for uh, decades by the Italian government to make the Tuscan dialect the official Italian dialect. And what and happened? Until the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what happened after that? Fascism. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, a big, uh, no, a strong sense of, of yeah. nationalism. Yeah, yeah. It's the same with Germany. It's the same with Arabic. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the 7th century, the first book, in uh, the first Arabic book, in the written Arabic uh, alphabet, yeah. the Quran, mm -hmm. an explosion of a, se of, of, of a sense, we call it nationalism, it wasn't really nationalism back then, yeah. but of community, of oneness, for the first time, that exploded, exploded. onto if, the region. If we said that alphabet grants you some kind of a superpower, there's no better example than what happened in the Arabian Peninsula, the Arabs were always there as some kind of a known, unknown people. Uh, they had traditions of uh, language traditions, but not writing traditions. They knew the power of language and they loved language and they used language to make songs and uh, poems and stuff like that, but they never written those yes. songs and poems. They mean it that they yes. invented an alphabet. Yes. Those entire, uh, literally unconnected people, yes. uh, separated yes. by outer space, basically. And also with the history of wars and animosity between yeah, them. Yeah, with blood uh, feuds Woo. ranging hundreds of years yes. back. With the different tribes. The yes. moment that you gave them some sense of oneness. oneness through a written language, they conquered basically the entire world in 200 years. Incredible yeah. feat. Incredible historical feat. And if you want if another great example that is 
the Jewish people <laughs> because we are so insignificant historically. But the fact that we were so close to the place that written <laughs> phonetic language yes. was born, yes. we could, uh, yeah, right at the beginning, yeah, we had a head it. start. Yeah, we had a head start. So our, not ridiculous, but our stories, our insignificant stories about some very respected guy who speaks with the, the Lord, uh, and he's not a king, uh, he's just a respectable guy. He's who, not a warrior. He's not a warlord. He's not a commander of armies. Yes. The Jewish people or the, Hebrew. the Hebrews, ancient Hebrews, cemented their place in history through the written language. They well, even when they were dispersed all over the region and yeah. beyond, they still had this sense of oneness yeah. that they had for so long because it started much earlier. Yeah. yeah, and it literally saved them. Yes. Sort of. Because that ancient city? Ancient Ancienticity. That ancient <laughs> city ancientness ancientness uh, the fact that they could prove that they're ancient because they had written proof of yeah. that ancientness uh, meant that the romans when they came to mm -hmm. the area uh, regarded them as an ancient people yes. that uh, yeah, and they didn't them. force yeah they respected them they didn't force their rituals up at first at first <laughs> <laughs> at first and uh, even then, even when they fro forced it, they were just like imperial. They didn't yeah, yeah, we overreacted. Yeah, I think that <laughs> the people here overreact. To get the entire episode and all our content, look for a podcast of Biblical Proportions on all podcasting platforms.